Hi, Dave here from Continental Express. Uh, welcome to our podcast series where, where we're going to be sharing stories and tips from drivers and office staff. Hi. Okay. Um, hi, it's Dave here with Continental Express, and we're doing another podcast on defensive driving. Um, we're going to we got Jake Albers, our operations manager, and we got Aaron yep. Nichols, um, and he's a two-year driver. He's got about two years' experience, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, defensive driving and some of the best tactics and practices that we use to stay safe. Uh, Jake, what you, you want to kick us off with something? You got something to throw out? Sure. Yeah, right. I guess I'll start. Yeah, yeah. I think it was my first holiday here. Dave actually called me. I was thinking about this whenever he brought up the topic. And Dave, you actually called me, you know, in anticipation of the first holiday. I can't remember. You know, maybe it's Fourth of July. You know, going into the holiday weekend. April Fool's. You know, and, and Dave, <laughs> Dave, you called and you said, you know, hey, I just want to give, you know, give a message out. You know, let's let's make sure that the fleet is safe here going into the weekend. You know, and, and you brought up defensive driving that day. You know, and I, I I still remember this day. You know, the conversation that we had had because I thought he had really great advice. You started out about how important it is to sit up straight in your seat. Yeah. yeah. That was the first thing you told me. And he said, second thing you needed to be, your head needs to be on a swivel, you know, nonstop, you know, looking back and forth, you know, and, and yeah. being aware of what's in front of you, but also being aware of what's behind you, you know, what's coming up behind you, you know, or beside you. So, you know, I thought that was really, you know, great advice, you know, just pretty simple, fundamental advice, but, you know, something that one, you know, it spoke about your character for you personally, you know, that you cared enough to bring it up you know that hey let's let's get this word out here and let's make sure that the fleet is being safe so you know i took your advice i absolutely communicated to the team that day and um you know we had a safe weekend going in for that holiday weekend and it worked out well but you know, that was the first thought that i had about defensive driving whenever you approached me about you know joining the podcast <laughs> yeah. here today so that was that was positive yeah and, that, and that's you know that's one thing i'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the holiday stuff because um that's you drive completely different, um, I, even in a car, not just in a semi, but I, at least I do, and I imagine most people probably do uh, when the holidays are coming up. Um, for one, leading up to the holiday, you've got a lot of law enforcement out, so you're looking for, you know, you're watching for that and making sure you're being safe and watching your speed, and you know, nobody wants to come out of a holiday with a, with a, with a ticket, um, but then, as you approach the weekend or the holiday travel the volume of traffic on the road significantly increases or exponentially absolutely um which makes it even more imperative to be defensive drive safe watch what you're doing um i know i've, I've been driving for almost 20 years and one of the things i still do to this day i even started doing it in my, you know, I realize I do the most of the stuff in my car too, without even thinking about it. Anytime I go to change lanes, I always just assume somebody's there. I never just look in the mirror and change lanes. I always assume, you know what? The second I look away from the mirror, there'll be somebody there. So I'm uh, extra careful changing lanes and watching what I'm doing. Um, back and forth and uh, you've been driving for a couple years um, is it is it feel different now when you drive your car now that you've been driving a truck for a while oh yeah I would say I um, you know I'm actually a, a licensed trainer trainer for Continental now so I, do, oh, uh, so okay. I, I, I guess cool. I get a ride uh, shotgun a little bit uh, you know uh, <laughs> that sort of stuff so it's obviously it, it affects me in my relationship with my fiance when she's driving and I'm in the passenger seat so I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I kick out a draining mode because she definitely, um, she's definitely raised my blood pressure a couple times. But uh, you know, um, you know, it's funny to talk about lane changing and that sort of stuff. It's one thing to talk to my trainees about is um, just how difficult it is in a semi. You know, you got yeah. seventy feet of road that you're yep. responsible for. That's your truck. Yep. Um, so basically, performing the least amount of lane changes is yes. going to be overall safe. Um, you know, so whether that's uh, biggest thing is on turns. You know, because obviously a lot of them just got their license. They're all worried about you know closest lane, legal lane. You know, and then that sort of stuff. Yep. And I train them as a driver, semi driver. You need to be aware of what's the best lane to change into. Yes. So you know, if you're going to be turning right onto a road, but you know you're going to be taking a left within a mile, 
It's the safest thing to do is to turn into the left lane because yeah. if you turn into the right and then you're doing multiple lane changes to get back, that may not be always yeah. the safest situation. That's 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 one of the things that I that I looked um, that that um, I, I came to my mind is like to intersections, making sure when you're coming up to an intersection, you need to be able to take over that intersection. You may need that whole intersect there may be four lanes of traffic coming from each direction but you may need that whole intersection to make your turn safely so when you get up there and it's your turn you need to be prepared to be in the right lane that whatever lane you need to be in to make your turn and oh, there's so much going on with the intersections traffic pedestrians uh, you, you name it uh, time of day makes a big difference but if you need to go and butt hook to make that left turn or, or butt hook to make that right turn, you need to be in the right lane or in the right position to be able to do that. Um, and you gotta do a lot of defensive driving and really watch what's going on uh, in front of you, beside you, behind you, because you start straddling two lanes, you know you're gonna make a right hand turn up here then you got to worry about the guy behind you wondering what's going on, and he tries to run up the side of you. <laughs> you know, which happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought up intersections. So that's a that's a big thing to be defensive about. It's there. You need to you need to understand the intersection. You need to go approach it slowly, and you need to make sure you're in a proper position to do your turns. Uh, and that's a lot of the defense that comes into that. So obviously I'm not a semi truck driver here, you know, but I, I have a lot of, I guess my defensive driving habits really developed. I, 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 have, I have a motorcycle friends. I have a lot of truck driving friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my point is here that I learned a lot of defensive driving whenever I was, I had a motorcycle growing up as a young guy, yeah. you know, so, yeah. you know, you're, 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 you're on a, you know, one, two wheels, you know, obviously, and you know, you're the one that's probably going to be overlooked, right? So one thing at the intersection, I, I still to this day, every time that I'm, you know, somebody's crossing my route that I'm in, you know, it can be deceiving as you're moving, you know, 55, 65, whatever miles per hour that you're traveling is, is this car going to pull out in front of me? Yep. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I always sit there and I study the rims of the tire because yep. that's how I can see that, that the, the yeah. wheels are moving. I better be prepared to stop. You know, he's not, he doesn't see me. He's not gonna, he's gonna pull out in front of me. Yeah. You know, and I need to be prepared for that. So I always anticipate, and I still to this day, if I see a car that's crossing, could potentially be crossing in front of me or pulling out, mm -hmm. I always, my eyes are on the rims, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because of the background of the vehicle is moving, right? And it can yeah. be deceiving, you know, if you're not looking, but the rims, 100%, those are moving. You can tell if they're stopped or moving. Yeah. That's going to indicate, you know, how do I start reacting and preparing yeah. for that. So and, 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 always anticipate, they don't see me. You know, yeah. I think that you guys can probably say that these guys on the roads today, you know, the, pa the passenger cars don't, they, how they don't see you, I don't know, but they, yep. but they don't see you. you well, know, they're I not know. paying attention. Yeah, you're exactly right. They're on their phones. Yeah. Well, and, and I noticed too with the newer vehicles, um, I, the, they, it's, They've got the little things on the mirrors sure. that yeah, light up if there's something beside you. And I notice more and more people, instead of actually bothering to signal and look back and make sure it's safe and then move over, they're just looking at their mirror to see if the light comes on. They're not even looking at their mirror to see if there's a car there. Well, the light didn't come on, I just right. get over right. And I've had people actually right across my bumper. Sure. And then throw their hands up and look at me like, like I did ball. something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going, you know, I'm right here. I'm, you know, yeah. I think so. the the phone thing, you know, point there too, Aaron, is really yeah. important because you know, I I just I spoke to a driver. It's been probably 18 months ago, but I asked him about you know what's the phone usage like out on the highway. And he said, you know what, Jake, interesting story. <laughs> he said one day I was driving down to Florida. And I made the decision that he was contemplating purchasing a motorcycle himself. Oh, okay. He said, but I, before I did that, I wanted to take account on how many personal cars are out there on the road on their cell phones. So he said, I decided that the next 100 cars that pass me in my semi, I'm going to count and see once how many of them are on their phone. And that day, he told me 87 out of the oh, next 100 it. cars were on their cell phone. I would, I would believe 90% of the vehicles on the road yeah. are on their cell phones, not paying attention to what's going yeah. on around. 
Yeah. Okay, so that decided that determined the, the, the was the deciding factor on him not purchasing a motorcycle. He's like, yeah. clearly they're not going to be paying attention to me. So he said, I'm not going to put myself yeah. in that position. So yeah, that was I, an interesting fact. I, yeah, um, and I know, uh, you know, I drove. I've never drove a motorcycle. Sure. Um, but I know driving a car. I drive my car now completely different than I sure. ever did before. Once I started driving a truck, and you know. I didn't know about trucks. I didn't know the mentality of it. I didn't, you know, sure. I, I just get out and drive my car. Right. And uh, I thought, man, now that I see what other cars do to me while I'm driving, like, I, I give trucks a wide berth. Sure. I go way down the road before I get back over to, to so, you know. Um, yeah, I drive completely different. Um, and so, from a motorcycle to a car to a semi, it's probably the same kind of thing. It's um, all driving. But you need a lot more room to maneuver, Absolutely. a lot more time to react. You really, like you said, being in the proper lane, being in the right position, um, could be the difference between an accident and no accident. And so, one of the things that I caught myself doing one time, it, I've done it for years and just never realized it. Um, but I was just, you know, kind of thinking things through. Um, I, I think um, somebody, Aaron, asked me, you know, what do you do out there? How are you so? How are you so safe? You've got, you know, you've got all these billions of miles. Of, but what are you doing different? And I said, you know, I don't know. I don't think I'm any different than anybody else out there driving. You know, um, and I started thinking about it, and then I. I caught myself one time. I said, you know what? Every time I come up to an overpass, I'm watching the overpass. I'm seeing if the light's going to turn green, if there's trucks or cars going to start flying down that entrance ramp. Sure. Uh, so be, as I'm coming up to the overpasses, and when I see that happening, I'm automatically already moving from the right lane over to the middle because I know there's going to be a flood of cars trying sure. to come on. Sure. And I just, one day that just kind of clicked in my head. You know, I didn't realize that I do that, but I do that all the time. Sure. You know, sure. it's just, just one of those mental things um, that you, you look for. So, have you noticed that, you know, you're driving any, when you, you know, you said you're training, mm -hmm. you know, and you've been driving for a couple of years. Are you, do you drive the car different now? Oh, yeah, like I said, I, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely different. <clears throat> I think one of the biggest things when you talk about defensive driving is, is you know, obviously you're, you're you're driving to the effect of everybody else around you, and I guess yes. the general public doesn't understand how a truck operates. My brother was telling me the story, uh, telling me that he drives differently now that I drive a truck. Yep. So he gives him, yep. he'll give him plenty of space and stuff. So I was telling him of the physics of driving. I mean, it takes a fully loaded semi almost a mile, mile and a quarter to go from zero to sixty. Like it takes that yeah. much space and time. He had no idea that it would you know require that much time and space. Yeah, and then you know. People will, will you know, coming up to a stoplight and people will like try to get two cars ahead so they'll cut in front of you thinking obviously semis can stop on a dime, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just having to drive in a way that takes into account everybody's um, lack of awareness, you know, being yeah, on phones yeah, yeah. and people's lack of awareness of, yeah. of not cutting off semis, allowing them plenty of space, get flashing yeah. your lights at them, letting them come over, that sort of thing. I, when I, when I, uh, I mean, you, you bring that up about uh, people being unaware, it's, it, when I was 16 in high school and I went to driver's ed, there was three and a half pages in the manual on how to drive and be safe around semis. That's three and a half pages of semi information that I'm getting. Now, my son, Five years ago, when he was 16, he said there's one paragraph. Uh, people are unaware because they're no longer being educated about it. Um, it is, is a big problem, but yeah. Um, what, one of the other things that I do um, is daytime, nighttime, um, of course it's, it's different depending on, in, you know, if you're in the city, out on the open road, daytime, nighttime, weather conditions. But I always try to keep space around me. I don't. I can't stand having cars sitting right beside the trailer, sitting back at my tandems, or sitting right up on my. I'll slow down. I'll speed up. I do whatever I need to do. I, I, I see 20 cars half a mile of road up in front of me, and 
ten behind me and I'll have one beside me and I, I want to get away from that one guy. I want I want to be the one away from everybody. So I got, remember you talking about that too with that holiday. Don't drive in the pack. Get out yeah, of the pack. Get out of the pack. pack. Yeah, it's um and sometimes being offensive is the best defense in, in that situation. I've had times where I've hey, I want I need to get away from this guy. I gotta punch it. Yeah, I gotta get the speed up and get away from him. Or, you know, you back off and now you got five more of them around you. So it's, you know, you kind of pick your spot in the room and try to maintain it. So oh, we just got in and Aaron, you made it. Hello. <laughs> so we're talking about defensive driving and defensive driving habits and some of the best practices that uh, we can put in place. Uh, for defensive driving, you yeah. imagine you covered most of them. Like that at all. Aaron is a trainer. Yes. Um, no, he's not. And Angie uses him very wisely. So, um, being a local driver, um, we get a lot of like expertise on maneuvering and um, making turns the proper way, um, you know, using your turn signal and plenty of distance, um, not changing lanes too quickly. So, those are some of the things that he works on distance, space, cushion, speed. Stuff. I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, so, I mean, we were talking about, um, you know, I talked about watching overpasses, watching for people coming down entrance ramps, um, preparing to change lanes, even, in, you know, before you get to that point where you have to. Um, Aaron brought up uh, making sure you're in the right lane to make good turns. Um, uh, we, we talked about safety cushion, yeah. uh, keeping space around you. So looking um, ahead three to four to five yeah. seconds, depending. Yeah. So space what, about, what about stress management or you know, dealing <laughs> with road rage people? I hear a lot of our drivers say that the easiest thing for them to do <laughs> is just back off or, you know, mm -hmm. back off, yep. let the other truck get some distance or take the next exit. Um, you know, and then get back on the ramp and just kind of maintain your your piece away from that guy. Or yeah. Anything. Yeah, I've actually separation. Yep, I've I've actually pulled over and stopped for no reason, but then to let somebody get down the road for for that. Yeah, just say okay, this guy doesn't want me passing him, or or see him back and forth. Uh, you know, I want my space. He wants his space. Sure. So yeah, so you pull off a ramp. And back on I've done that yeah well I think uh, just uh, I think having the mentality of realize it's uh, most of the time it's not personal like either yeah. they're having a bad day or they didn't see you or they're not paying attention that sort of stuff mm -hmm. they're not doing it to you because of who you are or what you did that sort of stuff yeah. you know they're everybody true. has situations that they just you know they find themselves in a really bad situation you get someone who's an aggressive driver or someone's not paying attention and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff um, you know, you just gotta realize is you have to take it personally. If you gotta cuss, call them something underneath their breath, and that sort of stuff. And everybody has a little bit of yeah. way to let off a little bit of steam, but then yeah. just depressurize and realize that you're responsible. One thing you really can control is yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's really is the only thing you have control over is yeah. your truck. You can't control the people on the road, no matter how hard you try, and yeah. um, how many how much mental <laughs> thinking you do. Um, so like I said, yeah, it definitely whatever technique you need to do. If it's a if it's a favorite, if it's a, one of your favorite songs that cools you down, yeah, throw that yeah. on. Uh, whether it be I don't know, like I said, will say a prayer or do something like that. Yeah. Do something to stress you, and if it's not working again, something like pulling over or taking the next exit or just going to a rest stop, just parking for a few minutes, letting them get out of your way, take a breather, stretch your legs, yeah. and then continue. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, uh, one of the things that I do, you know, if I start finding myself getting stressed or just getting anxious or just getting upset is, you know, I concentrate and think about, you know, my family and, you know, here I am, I'm out here, I'm driving 80,000 pounds down the road and, and I'm not in a good mindset, but you know what, my mindset needs to be, hey, I need to get this delivered safely, I want to see my family as quickly as possible and not from a hospital bed, <laughs> you know. Um, so that, that's one of the things that I run through my mind to kind of bring myself back down if I get to where I get, you, know, you get too hyped up or you get upset or anxious or stressed. It's, it's just, you know, I think about, you know what, 
I need to make sure I get home safe to my family. So I need to check myself, relax, and, um, you know. I had an interesting story, I guess, regarding, you know, the stress and frustration I just thought of. Uh, I was actually listening to a priest speak. And he said he had road rage, terrible road rage. <laughs> you know, you're thinking of the priest, you know, right? Holy, right? Godly person, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. He's like, he said, I have a confession to make in front of the group. You know, he said, I have terrible road rage. He said, I cannot stand, you know, the person that, the grandma that's driving 40 miles an hour, you know, in a 55 zone. Yeah. He said, he actually, you know, he curses, he gets mad, angry, you know, yeah. all the above, right? Yeah. And he said that it, it, for years, his whole life, you know, and then finally his mother actually was the only person that got him to like change his attitude about it and he said she she told him you know you never know what that person's going through you know yep. maybe that person in the other vehicle you know she's scared to death to drive you know 55 miles an hour because she yeah. just got out of an accident just last week you know and yeah. this is her first time on the road you know so the, some of these folks you never really know what they're going through or what, what their mental state is either you know so he, I thought it was interesting advice you know that you, know, you got to consider be considerate of one another you know that Maybe they, maybe you know, they had a terrible experience, or they just lost a loved one of themselves in an automobile accident that's causing their behavior. Yeah, you know, yeah, or, or, or they got a ticket for sure. speeding two speeding. days ago, and sure. they don't need another. You one. never know, yeah. right? Yeah, you, yeah, you never know. know. So, I think that was some of the interesting advice that he, you know, yeah. you gotta be aware, you know, be mindful yeah. and be respectful, you know, because you, one of us might be going through that, having a bad day too, yeah. right? I mean, it's the same. Mine, mine might be somewhere else, but you really need to get, you know, from A to B here and. You know, maybe you've lost focus on what you're actually doing, you know, and maybe yeah. I'm driving too slow today, or maybe I'm going too fast today, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, is that when it comes uh, to the mentality of it, it's uh, driving truck is extremely stressful. It's, yeah, I mean, and it can really wear on you over time. Mm -hmm. um, but you just, you have to maintain your composure and you have to maintain professionalism. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, you don't know who's in that car. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know why they're doing what they're doing. But yeah, you know. So yeah, you you can't get. We we all get upset. We all get you get mad and start stomping. I go, come on, I just want to go. But yeah, you, you like I said, you have to check yourself and just go, hey, you know, I, I don't know what they're going through. Let me back off, get around them, and get down the road. Sure. I'll find peace down the road and let them have their peace back here or, or, or whatever or pull over and stop and just take five minutes to take a breather you know so I think that that's you know, the five minutes take five minutes you know like is it really worth you know mm -hmm. having your blood pressure go up you know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. know uh, jeopardizing your health you know really or you know yeah. creating the stress on yourself you know to you know over five minutes you yeah. know or 30 seconds or whatever that situation yeah, may be you yeah. know like is it really worth it in the grand scheme of you know yeah. your day or yeah. your life? You know, exactly. At that point? It's, uh, you know, we're talking about mere minutes here, really, that we're we're, we're dealing with. You know, shaving off of your day. And, you know, I, I try. I, I don't. You know, you guys are traveling. You know, hundreds of miles every day, right? Mm -hmm. I'm traveling. You know, maybe forty miles a day, back and forth. But <laughs> if I get stopped, you know, a, a rail crossing, you know, a, a trains, you know, blocking the road, right? You know, and I'm. I'm already late for work or you know I really want to get home to the ball game you know or whatever it is I also like to stay calm for me I always say I'm not supposed to be there yet you know like I always try to just say just take put that into consideration in my mind well maybe I'm supposed to be stopped right now for whatever reason maybe I don't know I hope I never know you know yeah. but you know maybe I'm supposed to be delayed right now maybe I'm supposed to be pulling off to the side of you know the, 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 the off ramp you know to Take, to create some separation and take the five minutes because maybe something else would have been much worse, you know, so I yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, I, I had a great experience like that. It was actually, it was Thanksgiving Day. Sure. Um, I was trying to get home, you know, it was, it was a Thursday. My family usually celebrates on Friday, so I was gonna drive on Thursday. And I went to uh, Anderson's, the Interstate Warehouse, and I was told they were open, uh, but actually they weren't. <laughs> uh, so I sit there, I'm like, oh, come on, really? Like, I, I drove here and that sort of stuff. I'm like, okay, fine. So I turn around, basically, and head back towards the interstate and there was a railroad track and it stopped and there was a railroad crossing sort sure. of thing. And uh, so I'd sit there, sit there and all of a sudden this person comes up and knocks on my door and it's a security guard from the interstate warehouse. He's like, hey, were you trying to, to drop here? And I was like, yeah, but like I said, no one's here. He goes, oh, you go ahead and drop. 
So I turned around the road, so there's plenty of space and stuff, went there, and you have to finish a load, and, you know, sort of stuff, and do it. So if that train had not been there, I would have had to drove, you know, that. drive all the way back to the yard, and then come <laughs> yeah, Monday and drive yeah. back to there, you know. So yeah. that's one of those things. You just realize the little blessing of just being able to stop and sure. just enjoy well, sitting just for a minute. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, when you look at the big picture of things, like I said, things can wait. Take a little more time. It, nothing's going to matter if you don't make it long. Yeah, you know, so that the biggest thing is to get there. And that's the big challenge is hours of service. Um, you know, somebody yeah. that gets yep. held up and now they're worried that they may not be able to attend something or do something yeah, later were, on, and then they start driving a little bit more carelessly. And yes. That's when you got to keep the cool head. Yep, they're, 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 they're watching those minutes tick down, and that's their time clock, and they're getting anxious. And, yep. and, and that's, and that's our challenge is trying to get people to not worry so much about yeah. that. Yep. You know, if you get to a point where you gotta stop, you've gotta stop. You know, there's no sense in racing and trying yep. to do things that are unsafe at that point. So, yeah, so it's I mean it, it's interesting when you know when you get into the subject of defensive driving, being a defensive driver could mean anywhere from pulling over and stopping to speeding up and getting down the road and anywhere in between, depending on the condition, the the time of day, the weather, the traffic. It's it's such a broad subject to cover, and, and it, at any given time, one, one day to the next, it could be a, it could have a completely different, different definition for it. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Final thoughts is that it's absolutely necessary to maintain like safe vehicles, safe equipment, safe people. Um, you know, one little second of backing off and allowing somebody to get in your space you know and keep backing off instead of being a hothead um, is going to like prevent an accident you know we've seen it how yeah. many times yeah. even on local roads going into towns people are turning out of a parking lot and you're stop and go traffic and they want to edge out instead of letting that person out they just continue on until they hit people yeah um, those are the things we're going to try to avoid but overall we have to yeah, and most have to get people to back off. Yeah. They have to take the action. The drivers have to take the action. We yeah. can say it all day long in this office, but the drivers have to take the action. Yeah, and at the end of the day, um, you, you know, backing off and letting somebody in or gunning it and trying to fly, fly around them, uh, it's a matter of seconds or minutes on your travel time. It's not like right. if you back off and you're patient and you be defensive that, well, Crap, now I'm going to be driving for an extra half hour. Great. No, it's, you're talking seconds or right. minutes. The it's other part really is the backing off will, like, instead of having a small accident where cops have to come out and do their thing, you're delayed yes. now for another hour or two hours yep. at that point. So. Yeah, exactly. I think my final thought, you know, Aaron Nichols said it the best, you know, like, you can only control your action, right? Yes. You know, yeah, so that was good. I'm a huge advocate, you know. E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals the outcome. You know, so we can't control the event that's in front of us or occurs. You know, but you can control how you respond to it to determine the outcome that you expect to see. You know, so whatever that goal is, that outcome is, you got to tailor how you respond and react to it. You can have a favorable outcome at the end of the trip. Yeah, because basically, I mean, you're responsible for your truck. You are the driver. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what that car does or what that officer says or what that you're responsible for your actions, your truck. Um, so you can take a little pride in that, uh, um, yeah. but you yeah. can also take a, as a responsibility of, you know, this, how fast I'm going, how I'm lane changing, all the different aspects of the Smith system. You know, I, and at the end of the day, you're responsible for it. And you, uh, yeah. if you're safe and uh, doing your job well, you'll be rewarded for it. Yeah, as I can say, it, just, it all goes back to just trying to maintain professionalism and realizing that you're one of the biggest, most dangerous things on the road, so you need to be more defensive, and you need to watch out more than everybody else does because you're the professional, um, you know, and and you're held to a higher standard. So, it's, yeah. On that note, this should wrap up our uh, podcast on defensive driving.